friends welcome to my channel i am dr yogesh gaikwad and today i am going to tell you about five simple step for hypothesis testing now these are the five simple step of the hypothesis testing first state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis determine the significant level third test statistics compare your test statistics with the critical value and the table value and finally take the decision whether you want to accept the null hypothesis or whether you want to reject the null hypothesis and give your concluding statement now in this video i am going to tell you all these steps with a detailed example now let us look at the first step that is state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis null hypothesis shows the no relationship between the variable and where alternative hypothesis show the relationship between the variable now let us take one example suppose that if researcher want to understand whether there is any impact of university examination on the stress level of the college going student now for this research example we can develop the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis now the null hypothesis for this example is there is no significant relationship between the university examination and the stress level of the college going student and alternative hypothesis for this research example is there is significant relationship between the university examination and the college going student or you can define the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in different way also null hypothesis can be there is a no impact of university examination on the stress level of the student or there is an impact of university examination on the stress level of the student now let us take some example of the statistical hypothesis suppose if our test claim that the average age of the university student is less than 28 years now here we want to define the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for that purpose we will use the mu mu is nothing but the population mean here our null hypothesis is mu is equal to 28 and our alternative hypothesis is mu is less than 28 now let us take second example of the statistical hypothesis now here our test claim that average attendance of the female student in university is more than 60. again we want to define our null and alternative hypothesis with relation with mu that is population mean here our h0 that is null hypothesis is mu is equal to 60 and our alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 60. now look at the third example of the statistical hypothesis suppose if our test claim that average number of the cars that is used the mumbai pune express highway is 2000 per day now here again our null hypothesis is mu is equal to 2000 and alternative is mu is not equal to 2000 now after stating the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis the next step is determine your significant level now generally we denote the significant level by alpha and we consider the significant level by 1% or the 5% 5% means 0 0.05 and 1% means 0 0.01 here i would like to introduce a one more term that is confidence level but before that let us understand what is the significant level now significant level it is the chances or it is a probability of rejecting your null hypothesis now confidence level is exactly opposite to the significant level if my significant level is 5% then my confidence level is 95% if my significant level is 1% then my confidence level is 99% means we have to minus that significant level by 100 it's 100 minus your significant level is equal to your confidence level now the next example is select your test statistics now there are many testers available you can test your hypothesis by z test t test or chi square test now here first of all i would like to introduce you a z test now the question is that when you can use the z test suppose if your sample size is more than 30 and you know the sigma that is the standard deviation of the population then you can use the z test now z is equal to x bar minus mu by mu by square root of n here x bar is nothing but the sample mean mu is nothing but the population mean sigma is your population standard deviation and n is nothing but your sample size now the next test is the t test now again question is when uh, we can use the t test suppose if our sample size is less than 30 and we don't know the population standard deviation that is sigma and you know the standard deviation of your sample then we can use the t test again here x bar is nothing but the sample mean mu is the population mean s is standard deviation of the sample and n is nothing but the sample size in z test we have the standard deviation of the population 
here we do not have a standard deviation of the population therefore we use the t test and this s is representing the standard deviation of the sample the third test is the chi square test in chi square test you should have your observed value it is actually the non parametric test and through this observed value you can calculate the expected value now the fourth and fifth step in the fourth and fifth step you have to compare your calculated value with the critical value and the table value now just look at the screen here we have suppose calculated the z value and we have a z table value now suppose in this case if your z calculated value is less than z table value then you have to accept the null hypothesis and in reverse case suppose if the z calculated value is more than z table value then we have to reject the null hypothesis again in the t test also you have to calculate the z t critical value t table value and compare that with the t calculated value now in this case suppose if the t calculated value is less than t table value then we have to accept the null hypothesis and in reverse case suppose if our t calculated value is greater than t table value then we have to reject the null hypothesis now these are the five simple step to test your hypothesis now we will take our numerical example and we will try to understand this all the steps this all the process now in this numerical example the average iq for the adult population is 100 with the standard deviation of the 15 a researcher value this value has changed the researcher has decided to test the iq of the 75 random adults the average iq of the sample is 105 now here researcher want to check whether that iq of the adult population has changed or not now in this example our population mean is 100 the population side standard deviation is 15 the researcher has selected the 75 sample and the average iq of the sample is 105 means here we have a mu we have a sigma we have n that is sample size and here we have x bar now the question is that which statistical test or which test statistics is suitable for this example now here the sample size is more than 30 and we know the population standard deviation therefore we can select the z test now we will put all these values in the z formula and the final calculated value z is equal to is 2.89 now before that you have to define the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis our null hypothesis that is mu is equal to 100 and our alternative hypothesis that is mu is not equal to 100 and our final z calculated value is 2.89 now the next step is that we want to find out the z table value and the z critical value now if you want to find out the z table value and the critical value then you should know the confidence level and if you want to find out the confidence level then you should have the value of the significant level if my significant level is 5% then my confidence level is 95% therefore here the 95% is your confidence level this is two tail test and finally your z score is 1.960 the z table value or z critical value is 1.960 now in the final stage we will compare our z calculated value with the z table value now here z calculated value is greater than z table value therefore we can say that our null hypothesis is rejected and our alternative hypothesis is accepted therefore finally we can conclude that average iq of the adult population has changed with this note i would like to end this video i would be making a lot of videos on business research method thank you for watching this video and do not forget to subscribe the channel